What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of SmackDown, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Drew McIntyre leaving WWE, when is Michael Cole retiring, an AEW star seriously injured at the Ring of Honor pay-per-view, AEW stars at the Hall of Fame ceremony, as always we won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always we start off with the good as number one, keeping it real. Now last night's opening match saw the teams of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and the Usos trading some brutal barbs. Sami talked about how the family is about more than blood, it's about loyalty, something Roman Reigns never shows to Jay or Jimmy. Owens and Zayn promised to take the titles off them so the Usos can go back to being the wrestlers the fans love rather than being Roman Reigns' lackeys. However, the Usos weren't buying it and warned Sami and Kale it's going to be bloodline mania with the Usos doing what they always do, retain the titles and Sami and Owens doing what they do, lose the big match and Kevin Owens stabbing Zayn in the back. This was as intense as any brawl and raised questions about solidarity on both teams. Number 2. Wrestlers Don't Forget a last night's trip down memory lane between the Usos and Kao and Zayn didn't end with their exchange. It was also shown when the Street Profits entered the ring for their upcoming match while the Usos were leaving the ring, with Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford staring daggers at Jay and Jimmy, well aware of their various times the bloodline did them dirty. Little touches like this add to the WWE shared universe. Number 3. A Slobberknocker Battle Royal a last night's Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal was a classic slobberknocker with a good variety of stars, but more importantly, a core group of meaty muscular men. Now, the match eventually came down to Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed with all three men looking strong and Lashley winning, but with the almighty making Reed look strong even in defeat. Number 4. Ray Revives the Latino World Order Legado del Fantasma's alliance with Rey Mysterio is an example of how the WWE is using the Rey vs Dominic storyline to elevate other wrestlers. They took their time building the storyline of the group showing their respect for Rey and their disgust with Dominic leading to a logical reason for the former heels to offer Rey help. Having Rey give them Latino World Order shirts was a terrific touch as the faction has emulated the classic 90s faction with their merch. It'll be interesting to see whether the faction will get the push from their involvement with Rey. And can they coexist? Now how many times have fans had to endure the dreaded can they coexist trope? And we've criticized the WWE for overusing it, but not last night as the WWE went meta acknowledging the trope. It was funny listening to Michael Cole turn this cliched situation on its head, noting that Drew and Sheamus can't and won't coexist in their tag match against Imperium. While they managed to beat Imperium, it's clear whatever friendship they had is broken down again. But that was a good, what about the bad? As number 1, an anticlimactic promo. Last night's showdown between Rhodes and Roman Reigns was anticlimactic. Cody cut his usual strong promo talking about his journey back to WWE and his appreciation for the WWE Universe supporting him as he is. Cody even got a shot in at Roman for Reigns' is constantly mocking Cody's time in AEW. Rhodes noted how Roman likes to brag about all he's done but pointed out that Reigns didn't start doing anything until his 8th year in the industry. Ouch. Nevertheless, once Reigns got in the ring, he went to have the fans acknowledge him, then told Cody it was time for Rhodes to acknowledge him. Unfortunately, they didn't have much for Cody and Roman to do as they haven't laid a finger on each other building up to their match. The build up for Cody vs Reigns has featured some fantastic promos, but this might not have been one of them. Number 2. Steering Bobby Lashley and everyone else while the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal isn't known for a cavalcade of stars, it was disappointing to have the WWE bring the majority of competitors into the ring rather than have Bobby Lashley get a full entrance. This year's event wasn't a parade of curtain jerkers, so why treat them that way? And showcase Snorefest. The women's showcase preview was a dud, leaving fans little reason to get excited about the match. As we pointed out before, all eight women are talented, but the WWE's last minute assembling of three teams is all fans need to know about how much they care about the SmackDown's women's division and its undercard. There was nothing downright ugly as last night's show was nowhere near as exciting as the last two weeks of SmackDown, but with WrestleMania tonight, the WWE didn't seem to feel the need for anything special to hype the show and opted for some serviceable and occasional entertaining matches. What did you guys think of SmackDown last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first story looks at is Drew McIntyre leaving WWE? Or could Drew McIntyre be out on his way of WWE? He returned to WWE in 2017 after a failed initial run in the company, reinventing himself on the indie circuit and Impact Wrestling. 
A true second run has been a success, with the Scottish Warrior holding the WWE Championship twice and having a top spot over the last few years. However, that could be changing as PW Insider reports McIntyre is in the last year of his contract. It's unknown just when the contract expires, but word is the two haven't reached an agreement. Drew is an asset wherever he works and would likely command a lucrative offers from every major wrestling promotion. Next up, Michael Cole pondering retirement. A could SmackDown announce a Michael Cole be retiring soon? It may be hard to believe, but Cole has been in WWE since 1997 when he began as a backstage interviewer, stepping into the announce booth a year later and eventually becoming a regular. Cole appeared on the Richard Dyche podcast and discussed when he plans to retire. People ask me all the time, how long are you going to do this for? I'll tell you one thing, you know, 30 years would be a really cool goal. That's four years from now, but I can promise you this, I will get out before I slip. I'm not going to be in no disrespect to anyone else, but I'm not going to be a 75 or 80 year old man doing this week in and week out. I busted my ass. While Cole has had his fans and detractors, many fans agree his work has vastly improved since he's had more freedom to call matches as opposed to having Vince McMahon screaming in his ear. Cole's work leveled up further when he was partnered with Pat McAfee, whose infectious spirit added to the color commentary and was well received by fans as well as Cole. But Cole explained his reasons for retirement. I made a really good living and I want to be able to get out while the going is good and still be able to enjoy the rest of my life. I don't want to be a shell of myself. I don't want to be that. Man, that guy used to be good. He's not good anymore. I don't want to be that person. What do you guys think of Michael Cole hanging it up in four years time? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, is WWE changing up night one of Mania? Now, there's already been confusion about the main event after the WWE posted the lineup, placing Cena vs Austin Theory as the main event. However, the WWE clarified that the match would be opening the show as originally announced. Following that announcement, Dave Meltzer reported that Charlotte Flair vs Rhea Ripley would headline Night 1. That too may have changed as Wrestling News is reporting Daniel Cormier interviewed Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for ESPN to promote WrestleMania 39. Owens may have let it slip that the tag team title match would go on last because he said that he would be headlining. Uh, the main event has proved to be a touchy subject for Night 1 as supporters of the WWE's women's division have lobbied for a women's match to main event Night 1 of the show. As some fans have criticized WWE for switching last year's original main event of Charlotte vs Rondo with the Kevin Owens show featuring Stone Cold Steve Austin that turned into an impromptu no holes barred match. It's worth mentioning that the previous year's WrestleMania saw Bianca Belair battle Sasha Banks in Night 1's main event. Now, there's no consensus on this as some fans believe a main event should be judged by how hot the program is behind the match. If that's the criteria, what match should be main eventing night one? Next up, Lashley issues an open challenge for WrestleMania. Bobby Lashley scored an impressive win on SmackDown by winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, but that's not enough for the Almighty as he's issued an open challenge for this weekend's show. And he tweeted this. Surprise, surprise, who just won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal? Is there any doubt in anybody's mind who was going to win that? The Almighty. You can't have WrestleMania without the Almighty. My weekend is free. Let's see who's really ready for a real challenge. He wants to step up and get some from the Almighty. Next up, an AEW star injured. Bad news for Top Flight's Darius Martin, as reports are coming in, he suffered a broken leg during the ladder match at Ring of Honor's Supercard of Honor pay per view. Wrestle Talks Amanda Savage is reporting, after a ladder spot went wrong, Dante Martin appeared to have his leg twisted in an unnatural position after doing a flip onto stacked tables. Nick Houseman tweeted, I was told by someone backstage at the Ring of Honor Supercar that Dante Martin definitely broke his leg. Uh, we will continue monitoring this story for updates, but in the meantime, we send our well wishes for a fast and full recovery. Next up, Naomi spotted at the Ring of Honor event. Now, speaking of Ring of Honor's pay-per-view, Fifield was reporting that former superstar Naomi was spotted backstage at the event. Whether it was just her visiting fellow wrestlers or a hint of her plans remains unknown, but we'll likely have fans talking. Next up, AEW stars appear at the WWE Hall of Fame. Our 2023 Hall of Fame ceremony featured the usual cavalcade of stars from the WWE as well as former superstars who now work in AEW. AEW star Andrade was seen with his wife Charlotte Flair, while Malachi Black was present with his wife Selena Vega. There was also a Dean Malenko sighting, and rumor has it Buddy Matthews, who's currently dating Rhea Ripley, was present. And finally, Vince is rocking the stash. Last but not least, it appears that rumors of Vince McMahon's mustache have been confirmed. Photos have surfaced of last night's Hall of Fame ceremony with Vince with the pencil line mustache. Seriously, this photo doesn't even seem real. But there you have it, folks. Not the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Are you guys hyped for Mania? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.